Hello everyone, um, thank you very much for having me at the Vibrant Practices Symposium. I'm really looking forward to hearing, watching, experiencing, reading everyone's submissions and getting the chance to have a chat on the Friday and the Saturday. My name is Laura Swithenbank and I'm a PhD student at the School of Fine Art, History of Art and Cultural Studies at the University of Leeds. I'm in my fourth year and currently in the process of writing my thesis. So this paper today is an experimental piece of writing which attempts to compose and work through matter in what Karen Barad describes as both senses of the word. So in both the material and effective qualities as well as taking the intensities of what matters seriously in the world I'm attempting to cohere. The title of this paper, as you will have seen, is Pendleton Mattering. Pendleton being where I am right now, where I'm writing from and talking to you from, um, as well as where these events took place in Salford last year. Inspired by Barad's call for a new sense of aliveness, I'll think through matter, movement and the effective qualities of what Kathleen Stewart, Kathleen Stewart describes as knotting together into this thing now, and the significance with which things can come to matter. On my way back from a run around the park, I come onto the main road. It's the same road I ran up to get to the park about 30 minutes ago, but something feels different. It's a weekday morning, early on in the UK's reaction to the coronavirus pandemic. The school behind me is silent. The road, usually filled with cars, lorries and vans, even at just before 10 in the morning, is easy to cross. Birds can even be heard in the trees behind the green chain link fence, which runs around the primary school, while blackbirds scrabble about on the ground between lost balls and crisp packets. As I jog down the road towards home, the scene feels totally different. The pavements are busier than usual, with people walking alone or in twos and threes both up and down the hill. Dispersed streams of people line the pavement in socially distanced clumps between the bus stop and the Indian takeaway and social club. A neat older man with a newspaper tucked behind, under his arm sits on the wall of the Christian Community Centre. The tension in his posture, with arms crossed over his chest, with one leg rooted to the ground and the other crossed over on top, is tight like a rubber band. The club is an old Quaker meeting house, a beautiful tall building, ship-like in its grandeur, with extensions and a conservatory jutting out, expanding the club in all directions. As I approach the red brick sturdy structure with its bright cerulean blue drain pipes, it becomes clear that it is the focal point. The point which people have angled around, while their attention is focused outwards towards each other, or fixed peering towards the horizon, like people waiting for a bus. Distant from each other, but distinctly grouped, people greet one another, stepping into the street to pass before taking their spot near the club. Despite the unusually hot weather, people look smart in shorts, masks, caps and short sleeved shirts. Behind the wall, a couple are working at something. Like snorkelers, they, bent down, they bend down towards the floor of the beer garden, disappearing behind the wall before coming up with a brightly coloured piece of litter a clump of green weeds. All the while talking to a tanned man in a black tank top who stands some way away on the pavement. In the corner of the small garden stands a flagpole. Scanning up slowly, my eyes come to a halt at the Union Jack, which flaps at half-mast as it has done for weeks and weeks now. The matter of the scene, the qualities of a too early heat wave, the silent school building, the keen blackbirds who scramble, the fading surfaces of crisp packets and penny floaters, the tension of people's stance, the air of trying to do the right thing, the careful attention of litter pickers, the flash of bright blue disposable masks and drain pipes, and the Union Jack flapping at half mast, not together into this thing now. As the scene begins to cohere, I come to a halt on the opposite side of the road, hands on hips and mind whirling half enthralled by what is going on, half desperate for a rest. Looking around, taking all this in, I lock eyes with a man in his garden, enjoying the sun while he eats what looks like a bacon sarni. I feel hungry, dizzy, a little bit jealous as I smile at him, and my eyes flick between him and the focal point of the club building. I am too, as an amateur passing jogger, red-faced and curious about the activity going on, part and parcel of the mattering of this scene. The movement of people, ambling or walking purposefully in both directions, which come to a halt outside the club, conjures other scenes. Scenes which were completely commonplace prior to March 2020, 
in which later in the day roller shutters would be wide open, where taxis would pull up to the curb and balloons and decorations for a do would be jostled through the front door. Where the clack of heels on pavement, the thick scent of perfume or aftershave, the sharp precision of an hours old haircut would summon an altogether different sense of occasion from what is now unfolding, where countenances are still chipper, but distanced with sober purpose. Trying not to stare too hard at the people assembled, feeling cautious of blocking the path on my side of the road, which is empty in comparison, but the main route for anyone doing a pharmacy, a GP or corner shop trip, a head off home, buzzing with the excitement of the scene, in which something out of the ordinary, something that clearly mattered enough to leave the house for, was occurring. The passing glance between me and the man eating a sari in the sun, Memories of perfume and family discos, the energetics of my own body, the adrenaline from the run, me riding a wave of enthusiasm summoned by the sunny weather, the pull of the club as a central point, not together into this thing now. When I get back home, I quickly smuggle my phone out of its holster, my hands trembling as I find the club's Facebook page. My suspicions are quickly gratified when I see a post from nine minutes ago when the club steward posted a reminder about a late member passing by on their way up to Agecroft Creme. The significance of the scene spills off the screen with streams of comments wishing the family of the recently departed well. A swell of photographs and memories tumble off that post as well as the many similar posts beneath, extending information and sympathy from the committee, the stewards, the members, about different people. Not necessarily asking them to turn out to witness the hearse's passing, but circulating the news so that people can share a moment collectively to think of, to remember that person. I close the app, and as I make a move to untie the laces of my trainers and get back to work, I think of the flagpole at the Working Men's Club I am attached to and a member of over in Huddersfield. I think of our stewards, Stewardess and our president, charged with not only the maintenance of the club building and the grounds, but also the stewardship of that world, of the 400 or so people who make up its membership. I think of our own flagpole and whereabouts the Union Jack sits and what is happening out by the pavement there, over the Pennines. The streams of comments, of photographs, the swell of well wishes, happy memories, sadness and respect, the emerging sense of devastation, the realisation of the intensity of the situation, of how and how much this thing, this scene, matters, not together, into this thing now. Thank you.